So the title of the talk would be role of novel BLBLI in the management of MDR. So I think I'll just take you through this video. I think uh, it is important for all of you present here to understand uh, the whole science of how mechanism Bacterial works. Because this is something which is extremely important. May be acquired by several routes. One of the most important mechanisms is through a process known as transformation. Is that audible? During transformation, chromosomal genes are transferred from one bacterium to another. When a bacterium containing a resistance gene dies, naked DNA is released into the surrounding environment. If a bacterium of sufficient similarity to the dead one is in the vicinity, it will be able to uptake the naked DNA containing the resistance gene. Once inside the bacterium, the resistance gene may be transferred from the naked DNA to the chromosome of the host bacteria by a process known as homologous transformation. Over time, the bacterium may acquire enough of these resistance genes to result in a remodeling of the segment of the host DNA. If this remodeled DNA segment codes for cross-linking enzymes, i.e. penicillin binding proteins, the result is the production of altered penicillin binding proteins. These altered penicillin binding proteins can still cross-link the peptidoglycan layers of the cell wall but have a reduced affinity for beta-lactam antibiotics, thus rendering the bacterium resistant to the effects of penicillin and other agents. This transfer process has resulted in penicillin-resistant S. pneumoniae through the acquisition of genes from other naturally occurring penicillin-resistant streptococcus species. A second important mechanism by which bacteria become resistant to beta-lactam antibiotics is by the production of enzymes capable of inactivating or modifying the drug before it has a chance to exert its effect on the bacteria. Depending on the bacterial species, the gene coding for these enzymes may be found as part of the host DNA or on plasmids, which are small, self-replicating units of genetic material. Bacteria are capable of passing these resistance plasmids to each other by conjugation. When two bacteria come into close contact with each other, a small channel is created between them, which allows one of the bacteria to pass a copy of the resistance plasmid to the other. If the plasmid is transcribed and translated, the bacteria will begin to produce inactivating enzymes. These enzymes, capable of destroying beta-lactam antibiotics, are known as beta-lactamases. In gram-positive bacteria, the beta-lactamase enzyme is generally inducible, resulting in a large amount of enzyme being produced in the presence of the drug. In gram-negative bacteria, the beta-lactam enzymes are produced constitutively, i.e., even when the antibiotic is not present. Gram-positive bacteria release the beta-lactamase enzyme from the cell into the extracellular environment where it inactivates the drug before it enters the bacterial cell. In contrast, gram-negative bacteria retain the beta-lactamase enzyme within the periplasmic space, resulting in a more efficient mechanism than gram-positive bacteria. Ultimately, the destruction of the beta-lactam ring of the antibiotic renders it incapable of binding to the penicillin binding protein, and thus the bacteria become resistant to that drug or class of drugs. Okay. okay. So I think uh, it's a very good video for you to just for, especially for all the people to understand how the resistance works in organisms. I think those mechanisms are extremely important to have, uh, you know, just to be a little sensitive as to how the resistance develops. And I'll be talking about a lot of these enzymes and uh, I think it, uh, you know, it, 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 it gives you a bit of clarity as to how this whole resistance pattern works. So I think uh, when you look at antimicrobial resistance in India, as you would see, uh, the coliform resistance is uh, increasing uh, from 70% to 83% in 2013, so especially to the coliforms. And the Klebsiella pneumonia resistance is predominant to the cholestin, which is happening at 87.5% of the resistance to cholestin is coming mainly from the Klebsiella. So there is a resurgence of Klebsiella species having resistance to cholestin. And there is this Pseudomonas, which are pan drug resistance. So this is the main bane currently. So we are seeing more of resistance coming in Klebsiella and Pseudomonas 
as opposed to acinetobacter which was a problem about a decade back. So these were two studies from ICMR 2015 and by Gandra. As you see the carbapenem resistance is what is currently the problem. And this was the study where they looked at the blood culture and looked at the carbapenem resistance. And if you see acinetobacter, although it is still high, this was a little older study, uh, 2015, because the subsequent evidence I'll show is more in 2017 and 18. And but followed by Klebsiella pneumonia and Pseudomonas. So right now, even in our ICU, we see now, uh, you know, Klebsiella pneumonia seem to be in the forefront, and even Pseudomonas. And acinetobacter is seemingly getting little underemphasized, but I'm sure. Uh, this is a pattern I'm sure most of you are also seeing. So let us look into carbapenem and cholestin resistance, global and Indian trends. So this is a slide to compare how the resistance is between different countries. So when you look at uh, carbapenem resistant club pneumonia, if you see Asia, it is more than 50 percent. And this is followed by your uh, Middle East, uh, not the Middle East, the Mediterranean region, Italy and Greece and 1 to 5 percent in Europe, which is very less and US it's around 11 percent. So when you look at uh, carbapenem resistant E. coli, again uh, Asia seems to be higher, it's around 13 percent as compared to very less percentage in other areas. And if you look at cholestin resistance, because that is more uh, dreadful for us, so that, uh, that if you see actually even in the Mediterranean region, it's around uh, 15 to 25 percent and 3 to 12 percent. But this is 2014. But now I'm sure in Asia, I think our uh, cholestin resistant club pneumonia is significantly increasing and you would see in the subsequent slides that uh, trend seems to be increasing. And carbapenem resistance in particular because of possible overuse of carbapenems has significantly increased in last one year from 65 to 85 percent. So uh, because of our extensive usage of carbapenems, so we are seeing that the resistance is increasing uh, year on year. And what they found is uh, the main carbapenemase, you saw the resistant pattern. So there are different enzymes that are produced to confer resistance. So you just remember these names, the 14.3% of carbapenemase enzyme that is produced are serine carbapenemase and you will see how to classify these uh, resistant patterns. And 86% uh, of uh, resistance is seen in Klebsiella pneumonia and 8.8 in E. coli and 5.3% in Enterobacter cloacea. So, you would hear this time and again that Klebsiella pneumonia seems to be at the forefront of carbapenem resistance that we are seeing in this day and age. So I think this is an important slide for, uh, for us to understand uh, how this whole resistant patterns is spread across uh, different classes. So first one you have restricted uh, spectrum beta lactamase, then you have ESBLs, extended spectrum beta lactamase. So in ESBLs you have class A and class D which are called as serine enzymes. And then you have an AMC which is a different category. There you have class C which is uh, serine based and then you have carbapenemase. So this is the sort of a overview of the enzymes that confer resistance to different ones. And in carbapenemase you have serine and MBL. So this is the most dreaded one, metallobetalactamases. I think you have been hearing in the news that uh, NDM, New Delhi Metallobetalactamases which created a lot of uh, furor. I think this is dreadful one, this is resistant to a lot of these antibiotics and you would see that the current antibiotic we would talk uh, would also not be very effective against this group, metallobetalactamases. So in serine for carbapenemases, I think you have class A and class D. So basically you have class A, class B, class D and you, you have certain enzymes which are specific to these and you have certain organisms which manifest this. And in class A, it is KPC. Okay, and in class D, it's OXA48. So today, what you'll be hearing about this particular antibiotic, which we will be talking about, has a predominantly good action against KPC and OXA48. But what it doesn't have effect is on class B. So today, when you go home, I think you'll go home with three classes against which this antibiotic is very good: class A, class D, and class C. Class B, which is metallobetalactamases, they are NDM, which we have heard. VIM, IMP, PER, so these are some of the enzyme classes against which I think the current antibiotic we would be talking on may not be hugely effective and then we have to add it. If you have these strains, you have to add in another antibiotic which we will talk about. So when you look at what sort of organisms produce this class, I think you will see all the organisms we deal today in our ICU produce all these enzymes. So if you look at the classification, so E. coli which causes typically UTI intra-abdominal infections or bacteremia, they produce all classes, class A, class B, class C, class D. For all the advanced trainees or all the doctors who would uh, want to remember this, I think uh, class A is mainly the ESBL and KPC and class B is the most dreaded because that is your, uh, you know, metallobetalactamases which are resistant to a lot of antibiotics. 
Class C is the AMC for which we have some antibiotics and today we are going to talk. And today predominantly the antibiotic we are going to talk is very good against class D which is OXA. There are around 21 types of OXA. So OXA 48 is something that has been extensively researched. So if you look at CLEB, CLEB pneumonia, even that causes UTI, bloodstream infections and pneumonia. And you see CLEB gel also produces all these enzymes. And they do produce in various different, uh, you know, sort of severity. And if you look at enterobacter species, UTI, bloodstream and respiratory tract, they also produce all these enzymes, class A, class B, class C, class D. So remember, class B is the most dangerous because we do not have too many antibiotics. But class A is a one which, which is less sort of potent and we could treat it. But class C and D is the ones where we need some knowledge about what antibiotics we would deliberate. Pseudomonas which causes UTI, bloodstream, respiratory tract and skin and soft tissue, they also produce all these classes. So basically all the bugs today what we deal in ICU have potential to produce all these sort of enzymes. And so what are the beta lactams against which resistance? Well, pretty much all the typical beta lactams we would use, uh, you know, they are resistant. I think most of these are resistant to them. So penicillins or carbapenems or cephalosporins, most cephalosporins, they're all resistance to these enzymes produced by these nasty bugs. So this was uh, one of the study which came from AFMC. And here in their study, they found ESBL constituted the most significant bacteria to confer resistance, 40. And this study also was a little older one. I think this came in 2015. Uh, so here you see the AMC ones was 14.8 uh, and coexistence happened in 9.9. .9. So this was the time when I think uh, there was a resurgence of the whole resistance pattern that was happening. So even initially around 10 years back, you would agree that ESBLs were the more common. But nowadays we are seeing all these AMC, KPC and NDMs coming in. So this is a good study uh, which came from uh, US group. So they have investigated about the AXA. So this was an informed study which came in 2018. So what they found is uh, any organism not necessarily produces one enzyme. So they always coexist with multiple enzymes. And here in this study, they specifically looked at OXA48. And if you see the spread of OXA48, OXA48 predominantly 71.3% of the time, it coexisted with ESBL and OSBL. OSBL is original spectrum beta lactamase. So which means to say, one organism, you saw the resistance in that video, they can produce multiple enzymes to counter the resistance or to confer the resistance rather. And if you see predominantly only small percentage produce only one enzyme, 2% produces OXA48. Otherwise, they all happened in various combinations. OXA48 with metallobetalactamase, OXA48 with AMC, ESBL, OSBL. But significantly, OXA48 prevailed with ESBL and OSBL in 71%, which means to say most organisms have ability to produce multiple combination of these enzymes. So we'll look, obviously, we are interested in carbapenemase resistance in India. And the focus is on OXA because this is the commoner strain found in India. So we need to understand what is this OXA. OXA again is an enzyme. I think the first it was identified from Turkey in 2001 in 39 patients in 2006 to 7 it increased. First they identified in 2001 then they did a uh, cohort of patients around 39 identified in 2006 and 7. And in 2000 by 2010 it spread to neighboring countries. It went to Belgium, Lebanon and, uh, and uh, Egypt. So then it started spreading. In India they first isolated OXA 181 in 2006-2007. That's when it came to India. Uh, around that time and if I, I already said this because there are multiple OXA enzymes so what we are interested what is predominantly studied in India is OXA 48 because you see these are various fancy numbers given there are 21 different enzymes of OXA that has been identified and OXA 48 is what is being extensively studied and it has been found more so in India and predominantly two species have been identified with OXA 48 which is uh, mainly your Klebsiella and uh, E. coli and this is shown to have direct bearing on increase in mortality. And what they found is if an organism manifests high levels of OXA48, then there is a very high likelihood there is a coexistence of NDM, VIM is metallobetalactamase and ESPL, so which is dread, dreadful.